In the previous video, we looked at uh, the different stages of pregnancy and how the fetus inside the cow actually develops. And during around 280 something days, that gestation period. And today we're going to look at when this period actually ends. So when the cow actually gives birth. And we're also going to look at something called dystocia. Okay, so I'm going to tell that you guys in a little bit more detail now. now. But let's start looking at... Um, first while um, or what the fetus actually looks like so in this case in the previous one we just talked about the different stages but here we see that remember your fetus is within a couple of embryonic membranes and we have to look at what the purpose is of each of them okay so here i've got a quick sketch of again our little fetus right inside the womb inside the uterus and you guys must be able to uh, at least identify the four main layers and also what are their functions are. Okay, so the first membrane that's surrounding, the first one surrounding basically your fetus is called the amnion. So again, you've got your amnion, this is the, the membrane itself, and inside of it we have the amniotic fluid. So this is the fluid that protects the fetus on the inside. So quickly, just it contains the amniotic fluid. And it protects the embryo basically from any shocks, injuries, and basically also from dehydration. And a very neat trick about the amnion as well, the fluid, it's also there for temperature control. So inside the uterus, or inside the fluid as well, the temperature is around the body temperature of a cow, usually a little bit hotter. So it'll be around, well, for humans, 37. For cows, it'll be something between 38, 39, thereabouts. So with water especially, um, water does not change its temperature that easily. So it can't easily become too cold or easily to become too hot. So this is why the fluid helps with the temperature control. So it basically protects all around the fetus. Okay, so then we have the, the amnion and then we also have the quirion. So here it shows us it's basically this outside area. So right around we have the quirion on the outside, outside, all around. And the quirion basically it's also to give blood supply to the young fetus. So it's very blood rich. And also it forms a very important part, the placenta. So the placenta is this area of the, the chorion. So we can see the chorion is this area, but then it extends as it comes down, we get the placenta. So the placenta, basically this area, is where your fetus is bound to the female, to the cow. So basically it attaches the fetus to the mother. And its main purpose is to exchange nutrients and also waste products between the fetus and the mother. So any nutrients will come from the mother's side, also a blood supply on this side, not shown in the picture. So any nutrients goes from the mother to the fetus through the blood. But any waste products that this animal may have, like urine and feces, it can't go to the loo, obviously. So any waste products it produces that needs to immediately get rid of, like um, urea and so on, it will go through the placenta into the mother then the mother will urinate or defecate it out okay and then we also have the allen twine the allen twine is this area right on the inside here we've got the allen twine so it's basically between your amniotic fluid area your amnion and your placenta so this is actually extra humans do not have this area but um, especially your cows and most mammals have an allen twine if there's a different way of saying it, please inform me, but that's usually how I say it, it's French. So basically, um, is this also a sac-like area that collects waste products like urine of the fetus. So anything that doesn't have to be eliminated immediately stays inside here until it can be um, transferred through the blood into the mother's system so she can urinate it out. So it's like this collection sac for temporary waste products. Okay, so again, we've got the amnion right here quirion on the outside quirion leads into the placenta placenta attaches or um, yeah, attaches the the fetus to the mother and then you've got the allen twine in, inside here for the waste products okay then we move on to parturition so parturition is this fancy word that means giving birth so basically parturition is the normal ending of a pregnancy whereby the fetus is ejected or yeah, it goes out of the body of the cow, so it's ejected from the uterus. So again, here you've got in this picture, if this is the uterus um, in which the fetus is, parturition means that the fetus then will come out through the vulva, through the uterus, um, 
the, the cervix and everything, it'll go out through the vulva, and then you get your baby on the outside. As long as it's still inside the mother's body, it's known as the fetus. So as soon as it comes outside, starts breathing air and so on, you've got the calf or the young baby. Okay, so then just quickly, there are some signs that a farmer can notice to know that, okay, this time of the parturition phase is approaching. So usually what then happens, meaning it's going to be the end of pregnancy, the cow seems restless because, again, things are changing inside of her body, so she seems very, very restless and shows loss of appetite. So usually um, they will keep on drinking water because they must be hydrated throughout the entire process, but they do stop eating and they start fidgeting and they look uh, unrestful. So then second as well, the cow isolates herself usually and shows discomfort, obviously, because she could be in slight pain. But isolating herself means that she will usually stand to one side. She will move outside of the herd because she wants to be in a safe and silent area where she can actually give birth. So usually she, does, she doesn't want to be around the other cows. And thirdly, the vulva, the back area, not shown in the picture, but the vulva is the outside portion of the reproductive organs. It becomes swollen and usually mucus drips from this area. So this is usually a telltale a method of knowing okay she's very, very close because again this area of the birth canal needs to be lubricated which will help the calf come out so little mucus droplets usually come and form there then fourthly the other udder usually swells up and sometimes it can leak milk as well because now remember the udder is preparing itself to create milk for the young baby as soon as it starts to drink or will, will drink then also there is a correct fetal position for birth. There's incorrect ones as well, the flip side. So we're later on going to look at the incorrect ones. But the correct position, how the fetus should lay, is how this picture is showing it. And it's called the anterior presentation. So in this case, this is the posterior of the cow, yes. But this refers, the anterior here represents the, the head of the little calf or the fetus. So it means the head area, the anterior area of the calf is showing towards the cervix area, the vulva area. So the head is up top showing outwards and the legs as well. So both four legs along with the head will come out first, then the rest of the body and then the hind legs last. So this is your anterior presentation and this is the correct position that the calf must be in um, for birth. Usually, usually less complications will occur if the calf lies like this. Okay, so then your stages of parturition. Mainly it happens in three main stages. And yes, you guys must know the names of the three stages and at least one or two points what happens during this phase. So the first part is called the preparation phase. Um, the hours here are just for reference, so they rarely ask you guys to remember this, but it's roughly, for interest sake, about two to six hours. So meaning the body is preparing itself for the fetus to start coming out. So secondly, the cow's cervix, um, the birth canal, starts to relax and the uterine walls as well start to contract. So the cow will start experiencing mild contractions. They won't be too close together, but the body is starting to get itself ready to get rid of this baby. Then thirdly, the cow becomes restless again with signs of pain. So again, the cow is showing signs to the farmer or to the other cows that something is about to happen. Then the fetus also moves into that normal birthing position we just talked about, the head and legs towards the cervix, so towards the exit. So it's lying ready now. The second uh, phase then was called the ejection phase. So this is when the baby comes out. Usually lasts about one to four hours, depends on the breed of cow, depends on the circumstances, the environment of the cow. So it could be anywhere between one to four hours. And secondly, the cow usually lies down during this time. It's just easier for her to then give birth. And thirdly, the diaphragm. So remember your diaphragm is underneath um, your rib cage, just underneath the stomach. So cows also have one. The diaphragm is a very strong muscle. So this muscle, as, long, as well as the stomach muscles, contract. And this assists the uterine walls to push out the fetus. So basically all the muscles inside the, the abdominal cavity, in the, in the stomach cavity basically of the cow, then it starts to help the uterine walls or the uterine lining, um, those muscles, to help start push out the fetus. And then also the amnion breaks. Remember the amnion with the amniotic fluid. It breaks when the four limbs, the front hooves of the fetus, move through the vulva, so the back area. So then the, basically this is when the water breaks of the cow. Then also, lastly, the placenta just for a time stays behind. So normally the calf comes out or the little baby comes out and the 
after birth is usually what the placenta is called, stays behind. So meaning all those little membranes we talked about is still inside the cow's body, but just for a short while. So now the fetus is out. And thirdly is when the afterbirth gets expelled. So meaning the, the expulsion of the afterbirth or the placenta is when the placenta now will come out of the body. So this is during the third phase. So I say here that it usually happens within one hour of birth. Um, your textbooks differ a little bit of, from me. They say it's about from one hour to 24 hours. Uh, this can happen, but normally you want it to happen within one hour because it's normal. So then you don't get complications. As long or the longer the placenta stays inside the body for whatever reason it could cause complications. So generally you want it to happen within one hour. So, you know, um, the cow is still healthy and everything is fine. We're going to talk about why it's so important to for the placenta to come out in one of the next slides. Okay, so then secondly, short period of rest after the birth happens during this time. So just before the placenta comes out, the cow has some time to rest. All those muscles that contracted and everything um, relaxes now. And so the cow gets a short while of rest, a couple of minutes, half an hour. It depends on when the placenta comes out. So then lastly, peristaltic contractions, so again, spontaneous contractions of the muscles, um, expel the placenta from the uterus. So now the placenta, the afterbirth, comes right out after the, um, the same way the calf came out, the placenta comes out. So because it shouldn't stay there in the, the cow's body. Okay, then we're just going to talk about a dystocia. So dystocia basically means a difficult birth. So this is when anything goes wrong, we say the cow has dystocia. So secondly, it requires more tension and labor during birth. So meaning if this um, cow is having a difficult birth, you need someone to look at her, monitor her, make sure nothing is going well, something else is going wrong. Maybe the fetus will have to be saved. Then also it can lead potentially to the death of either the mother or the fetus. So for the farmer, except for the fact that it's quite sad, it could be bad for the farmer because now he's losing maybe his top cow and also maybe now he's losing his calf. So again, if the, the calf dies at birth, he basically wasted about nine to ten months um, of the cow's life because now she was useless for those months she was pregnant and now you won't be able to sell the calf eventually. So it is bad, it's a, basically a money loss or, or economic loss for the farmer. And also conditions that can lead to dissociation. So why can this happen? First thing is basically induction of parturition. So induction means that it's an artificial way of starting the birthing process. So usually this is when the farmer sees the cow for some reason is going past her due date. She was supposed to calf maybe a week ago and now he's using hormones or the vet is using basically hormones to start the birthing process. But this is unnatural and that can lead to problems. Then secondly, multiple births, meaning if the cow has twins, Maybe the first one comes out, maybe the second one twisted, it's in the wrong position, something can go wrong. So usually with twins and so on, things can go bad. Then also thirdly, premature birth. So meaning if the calf is born too early, things can go bad. And also a late birth, if the, the calf is born too late, that can also lead to problems. Then also um, incorrect fetal presentation. So meaning here, if one of the legs aren't showing forwards, if the calf for some reason is upside down, if the head is showing backwards, I can snap its neck. Um, if for some reason it's yeah, also lying upside down, but with the head in the wrong direction. So this is all wrong presentations. The calf is not looking in the right direction. It's not lying in the correct way. Then also incomplete cervical dilation. So meaning if the, I'm saying here small cervix, but not natural small cervix, but if the cervix for some reason is not relaxing and not becoming bigger, because again, the cervix will become the birth canal. And if the birth canal is too small, this could be an issue for um, the calf and the mother. Then lastly, vaginal tear, meaning during birth, um, the vagina will have a little tear in it, meaning this is still on the inside of the reproductive tract of the cow and pieces of fat or something can then go into the tear. So it can cause infection and yeah, so it's not good for the cow when this happens. So any one of these things can lead to a difficult birth. Okay, last slide. So basically what can also happen is the retention of the placenta. So when we see the placenta has to come out, ideally usually within an hour, okay, maybe one or two, but it has to come out of the, the cow's body. It shouldn't stay there. But so when the retention of placenta means is when the placenta stays inside the body or the uterus of the cow, it basically affects the health of the cow. It can also cause infection, 
all sorts of things because now again this is um, an extra organ basically inside the cow's uterus that normally was not there now it's there and it could start rotting and so many things happening in there so it can cause infection and also if the placenta is inside for longer than it should be it can cause delayed conception for the cow so meaning it'll take a longer time for this cow now to become pregnant again so it's basically a loss for the farmer then also if the farmer needs to get rid of the placenta there is ways again the vet can help uh, it's going to be high treatment costs for the farmer so again economically not good for the farmer then some factors that can cause placenta retention again why does this happen so usually it happens with a difficult birth dystocia secondly it can happen if there's inflammation of the placenta so meaning when the placenta and the, the fetus is still inside everything is still normal but for some reason the cow now gets an infection at the placenta area and or maybe after birth or before birth and now the placenta doesn't come out then also thirdly milk fever so basically milk fever again if you guys think back in the beginning of the year we talked about is when there's a lack of calcium inside the cow's body usually in the muscles so lack of calcium then because when the milk is being produced in the udder all the calcium goes to the udder so milk is being produced but now there's lack of calcium in the muscles so if there's no calcium in the muscles the muscles can't contract during the birthing process so again there's difficulty giving birth and now the placenta stays where it's not supposed to be it's supposed to with contractions come out but they no now no contractions can happen then also hypocalcemia basically the same thing as the milk fever um, there's too little amounts of um, calcium inside the cow's body this can also again cause the um, placenta to re retain inside then also induced calving or parturition meaning again if you if the farmer uses artificial means like hormones to start the, the the parturition process it can also cause some issue happening and again the placenta stays inside and then lastly any mineral deficiencies usually a shortage of selenium vitamin a or vitamin e um, can then cause basically the placenta to stay inside and not come out okay that was basically it for this um, lesson